Recording has started. Okay, thank you, Trish. Um, so I'm calling to order the uh, Dundee Township 708 Mental Health Board regular meeting on Thursday, January 14th, 2021. Uh, Supervisor Gleese, would you read the notice? This meeting of the Dundee Township 708 Mental Health Board will be held via a video audio conference call in accordance with the Illinois Governor's Executive Orders and Disaster Declarations regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. The general public had the opportunity to receive access to this meeting by making a request to the Dundee Township Clerk, Supervisor, or, um, the, or um, on the website. Senate Bill 2135 signed into law by Governor Pritzker addressed electronic meetings during time periods when the governor of the state of Illinois has issued a disaster declaration pursuant to this new law. The Dundee Township 708 Mental Health Board meeting will be conducted by video conference. There is not a physically present quorum of this board because the disaster declaration related to COVID-19 and public concern, health concerns affecting the township. Pursuant to the new to excuse me, pursuant to this law, Dundee Township Supervisor Patricia Trish Glees has determined that an in-person meeting at the township building with participant is not practical nor is it prudent because of this disaster. The township officials, council, and appointed board members will not be physically printed. Uh, present. This meeting is being video recorded and will be made available to the public via the Dundee Township website as provided by law and all, roll, all votes will be by roll call. The meeting video should be up by Tuesday, January 19th. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. Um, I just, Maria responded to my text. I'm sorry, I just cut my hand. I just got stitches. I don't know if I'll join, it hurts. Poor thing. <laughs> okay. She's cursed. <laughs> Poor kid. And not in a good way right now. I think a lot of bad luck's rolling her way. Yes, it's been a tough year for her above yeah. and beyond. Yeah. Um, okay, Trish, uh, would you do the roll call, please? Uh, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Armero. Present. Trustee Barrow. Supervisor Glaze. Present. Trustee Newshafer. Trustee Olden. Here. Trustee, uh, Trustee Setz. Here. And Trustee Witt. President Sets, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, and she sends me a picture. <laughs> it doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve or amend the agenda as presented. I move that we accept the agenda as um, presented in via email. Okay, do I have a second? I can second. Great. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Uh, Trustee Armero? Aye. Uh, Trustee Olam? Here. No, I need an aye. All right, sorry. <laughs> President Setz? Aye. Uh, Supervisor Gleese, aye. Your motion passes. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item is I will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of December 10th, 2020 of the 708 Mental Health Board regular meeting and amend or approve as presented. Can I have a motion, please? So move to um, dispense with the reading. Okay, thank you. Second, please. I can second. Thank you, Cindy. Okay, roll Any call. Any discussion? Oh, sorry. Um, 
I just have one minor correction to the minutes, which I will make uh, to the final version, which is under item six. Uh, it says discussion, President Seth stated a correction of the levy amount was required 1.5% or 0.015%. I want to change the or to a two. So it reads 1.5% to 0.015%. Okay, you'll send me that change, please. Yeah, when I, yeah, I'll send you the, the final version. Okay, thank you. That's my only change. Is, this, is there any other discussion? And seeing that it's just a wording change, uh, President Sets, you don't need a second motion on that. Okay. Because it's type it's typographical. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to do better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, can I have a, a, a vote? Roll call. All right. Uh, Trustee Olden. We are, what were you want me to say this time? Oh, I'm sorry. We're, we're I'm sorry. Motion we're to approve the minutes. We're approving the minutes. From last time. So I'm saying. Yes. I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> President Sess? Yes. Uh, Trustee Armero? Aye. And Supervisor Glees is an aye. That's four. Okay. Uh, Trish, did you receive any uh, public comments? No, um, but hang on. I'm bringing Maria in right now. She just popped in. Okay. Uh, but no, there and there's nobody else in the waiting room. Okay. Then Hi, guys. Hi, Maria. Sorry about your hand. I know. It's here. Oh, wow. <sighs> that looks I, nasty. It, it was. The funny thing is that I'm, I was in my boyfriend. I was about to leave. I was in my boyfriend's house. And... I don't know if you guys know, but in the Hispanic culture, you're supposed to kind of clean the dishes after you use them. And it was just two cups, just two. I could have just put them there, but I decided to like clean them up for them. And that's when I dropped the plate and then it stuck me right in there. So it's, it's kind of painful, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but I'm here. Thank I you survived. for joining. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Trish, would you note that Maria joined at uh, 6.48? Got it. Maria, I got, your, I got your meeting minutes for you. You're good. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Yeah. Accidents happen. That's yeah. right. Okay. Uh, going on to old business. Um, I have no update on ACT. At my, you know, because of the holidays and stuff, there really wasn't a lot of activity. The emails are starting to yes. flow through and I've been forwarding those, which I believe are relevant to uh, uh, the group. Uh, there's some, some emails I get for 337 boards and things like that, that I don't think we need to pay much attention to. Um, the uh, legislative update that I forwarded late this afternoon is sort of interesting. Uh, you might want to take a look at that because um, there were was, there was some legislation passed that actually um, is relevant to mental health. Uh, I, none, of the, none of this, of course, has been signed by the governor yet, but, um, uh, but they do have a listing of all the, uh, in the attachment, they do have a listing of all the bills that were passed by the Senate and the House and additional bills that were brought forward but were not acted on uh, during the session. Uh, the new, I think the new legislature got uh, sworn in today. I didn't hear any news about that, but today's the date. Yesterday. I'm sorry, today's Thursday, isn't it? Yeah, it was yesterday. Thanks, Trish. No problem. These days are really blended together. <laughs> um, I'm keeping issues with SharePoint on here. Uh, I actually haven't gone into SharePoint uh, recently. I, I don't know if any of you have had uh, time to struggle with it, but uh, I'll just leave it on the agenda for now. Um, any, any additional information from talking to people in the community? 
uh, that's uh, relevant to the 708 board at the moment. I'm assuming over the holidays, there probably wasn't a whole lot of activity, but uh, Trish, do you have something? Okay, so I have this directly from Trustee Witt um, and I'll take her text and I'll add it in. Um, okay, she, um, this is what she said. Uh, by the way, this is something I was actually going to raise at tonight's meeting. Both anxiety and depression are increasing exponentially right now due to COVID and the economic impact it is having on many families. At the end of this month, the moratorium on foreclosures and evictions and adding to the stress. A $600 similar stimulus check is woefully inadequate to deal with the mounting expenses and debt that so many are experiencing. While we have two and soon three vaccines now, it is good and to be celebrated. It is going to be a long time before our economy rebounds and all those who have lost their jobs and businesses are back on stable footing. I have a pay parishioner that has tested positive for COVID and she is currently going through full blown anxiety attacks. So I don't know if that means that that's a, anxiety attacks are an after or, or, or because of COVID or because of everything that's happening with COVID or is that another symptom or post symptom, not exactly sure. But that I, I will add that, um, I will add that. Um, I'm just gonna make one comment um, to this. Um, right now, the foreclosures and the moratorium on, um, on evictions are, are go through February 8th. Um, the, we have been told that um, incoming President Biden will be extending that, number one. Number two, um, we know that through the state of Illinois, um, gas and electric during the winter months cannot be turned off. Uh, I have been notified by Kane County that Kane County has is is requesting a $15 million grant which they have received, um, which will go specifically for paying rent. There's a downside to this because nobody knows how it's going to be. We haven't figured they haven't figured out how it's going to be distributed. So it'll either be distributed by the state or by the townships. So we don't know that answer yet. I will keep everybody apprised of that. However, from a township perspective, we have received our first of two checks um, related to COVID expenses and our second check, um, or yeah, our second check included, if we were to receive it, $100,000 for emergency assistance specifically to housing. I was not, I purposely did not specify rent or mortgage as I believe even if somebody who has a mortgage is going to have problems. So I just said housing expenses. Um, so that will, that hopefully will be, um, you know, th that is an avenue that exists. So does that, so for rental or more, for housing, is that covered under uh, your general assistance? Um, yep, yeah, general and emergency assistance, emergency correct. Assistance. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I meant, sorry. Well, no, I will tell you, we have had an, a, an extreme uptick on persons people um, who have, who are requesting um, and whether or not they, uh, they will qualify, uh, but requesting general assistance uh, where they are, they are showing, um, you know, loss of income because of COVID 
and they have now started to run out of unemployment. So they will, <clears throat> they will if, if they qualify, they will fall on the uh, general assistance roles until they can get back on their feet, get a job. Okay. Okay, so that's all I have from Wendy. Okay, anyone else? Well, maybe this is something that I wanna share just so that we kinda, you guys can shift a little bit of my background. I did get hired by the Elgin Police Department as a community outreach specialist. Oh, so right. I just started in that position last week. Um, it has been a great transition. I predominantly work with seniors and um, we are seeing a high number of fraud and scam uh, phone calls uh, targeting seniors, but just people of all ages um, when it comes to unemployment benefits and just, um, just scams and fraud in general. Um, so I, I'm i gonna be working a lot with how to reach out to the community, how to prevent some of those um, fraud, fraudulent phone calls and, and scam prevention tips. But one thing that I really like about the Elgin Police Department that I wanted to share with you guys is that they have a family finder program. So this is with people with disabilities or with, um, uh, autism, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, um, people of all ages who are who are potentially like more more. They wonder like part of their disability is to just escape certain situations and wander around. And what they do is that they offer to the uh, the public to um, put them in a system so there's an application where they can put their picture and their information in the system so the Elgin Police Department if they were to be you know lost or in the community and they call the police department then they can submit this form and then the police department has those they you know that data and information I thought that was a wonderful program and I just wanted to share that with you guys. We have that in DuPage County also. Mm -hmm. It's called a premise notification. And, okay. it's, and it, um, you can file it with the police department. And then it also goes to the fire department so that um, if there's a call to the house, that information comes up that there's a special mm -hmm. um, child or adult. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's stickers that some of the police departments provide yeah. to put on the car or on your door that says a special needs person lives here. Um, yeah. Um, those decals, I know um, we have at Bloomingdale Township um, and we give them out to the um, police officers from Roselle, Bloomingdale, mm -hmm. Um, and the sheriff's office for Medina. But, yes. No, uh, yeah. And I heard that because Elgin is such a big city and there are so many police officers and the police department is like pretty big that they have the program. But they told me that other police departments have reached out to them to see if they, you know, to gather similar ideas. But sometimes the police departments are kind of limited into what they, they can do, you know, with, with funding and like just in general implementing new ideas like that. So I just thought that was really a really good initiative. And I don't know if West D Police Department does it or has something similar to that, but or Carpentersville or, uh, you know, the um, East Dundee villages. Yeah. yeah. So just wanted to share that with you because I thought that was a very cool initiative that is you know basically what we're trying to do just kind of implement not implement but to gather ideas that are that would help our our community members with with mental health you know and help them be more safe and help families feel safe when there is a situation with law enforcement or or the, what, like you said the fire department so maria if you provide your work email to me my therapists have put together a file 
of the premise notifications and resources in DuPage County of what different police departments do. And we got awesome. this from the DuPage Juvenile Officers Association. Also, we work with the social workers um, from Roselle, Glendale Heights and Bloomingdale. And um, they're also part of the collective. So I will send you that file. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay, thanks for that, Maria. Does that, so you're working for the police department now and not the school district? No, I, I still am connected with the schools around U46 because we sometimes do presentations in their schools, but I'm right, I'm with the police department right now as of last week, so. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you guys, thank you so much. Okay, uh, and moving on to the next item, the development of the three-year plan will just keep on old business. I haven't really, really done much, prog had much progress on that at this point uh, with the holidays and other things going on. Um, all right, so moving on to new business. Uh, Trish, you were going to talk a bit about the uh, Ride and Cane program, specifically the paratransit services. Correct. Um, Trish is our guest speaker tonight. Yeah, I am your guest speaker. Ooh, ooh. Um, hang on, I've got to make a couple different changes. Okay, I've got, <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff here. Okay. Um, so I did not, um, I did not get fancy dancy and, um, uh, do a presentation. Um, so I'm just going to do an overview, um, of the writing cane program. Okay. Trish, but right before you start, I just want to let everybody know that this topic is related to the next topic on the agenda as well, um, which is allocating some funds. Uh, so I just want to let people know how those, those two items tie in. Together. Right. Um, okay, so Dundee Township had, um, was one of the founding um, sponsors of the cane, uh, Riding Cane program, which started about circa 2007. Um, I am the, um, I'm Trish Gleaves. I am the current uh Riding Cane Paratransit Council uh, Chairperson, and I have just been appointed to the RTA Advisory Board, Paratransit Advisory Board for Kane County. Um, so Dundee Township provides a curb-to-curb -curb transportation services that costs a rider $5 per trip, and they can go up to 10 miles of their house, except for I have ensured that if their medical facility is, if they happen to be on the farthest reach of, of Carpentersville, they can still get to St. Joe's or St. Alexis. Um, they can use it for medical, they can use it for dental. They can use it for grocery shopping. Um, Pre-COVID, they used it a lot for social purposes. And then we have our young riders, our 22 to 64-year-olds uh, who are um, still at work or still um, in school that either have emotional, physical, mental um, disabilities, and they they use they can use it for the same services. The rides are provided through Pace with either a Pace bus, which is handicap accessible, or taxi cabs. Um, you, you contact our office. We place an application after verifying age, specifications, etc. We then put you, it takes about 72 hours to um, get them into the system. Um, and then they just call the scheduling, the scheduling number and they, they schedule a ride. 
And as long as it's within the 10 miles, there is not a hiccup in the system. We uh, tell our riders to plan the rides 15 minutes uh, to always give an extra 15 minutes. So if they have a 9 a.m. job start or appointment, we always tell them, you know, 845. And the reason is Dundee Township for the last 12 to 24 months has been under construction. Um, so routes 25, 31, Huntley have been at times a bear. Um, we also have, you could also sign up, and this is something I used when I had foot surgery, um, emergency short-term service. Uh, so this is something that's generally under six months. Um, and you just can't drive. And in my in my case, I, I was not able, um, you know, I was I could not drive. Um, so the bus picked me, could, you know, picked me up at home and then could take me to work. Um, and this is generally due to a medical condition, and a doctor just has to have a sign off on it. Um, should um, should anybody need more specific paratransit uh, rides? We then connect them with. Um, we then connect them with the full RTA ADA paratransit service. Um, it, it's 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 a great thing. Prior to prior to COVID, um, I did a as Dundee Township Supervisor. I did a. I would do road shows, so I would go to different senior. Uh, either the senior center or senior housing apartments to talk to the seniors in particular to get them involved. Parents, once they hit 22, they know to reach, reach me, but the seniors were having problems. And at one of the senior housings, um, there were these three great uh, women, um, all of them, all of them were in their eighties and they were very proud of it. And they came up and signed up for it. And I, you know, went through this whole speech and, um, they said, could we use it to go to Emmett's on Friday nights? And I said, yeah, that's, that's a restaurant. That's fine. They're like, great. Now we don't have to worry about one of us being a designated driver. So, <laughs> So, um, you know, that's a great, I mean, that's a great chuckle and I love that. Um, but it is, it's a, it is a great program. Um, we did have to increase the rates to $5 um, and we did that straight through um, all of the sponsors. The, the name Ride and Cane, um, you know, goes back to the inception in 2007. You cannot ride entire cane. Uh, you know, every every sponsor, which is primary, e primarily either a village or a township, has their own rules and regulations and restrictions, if you will. Um, we do because we do border um, McHenry County. Many of our riders have been particularly our jerk, that would be our young riders, have figured out, and, and, and it's great, have figured out how to make a connection to McRide, um, which is McHenry's bus service, to get to places within like Crystal Lake. Um, so they are very, very intuitive on how this works. Um, we do, we do get complaints, um, you know, as with any kind of, of service, um, it is customer related. Um, and we deal with them on a one by one. And I try, uh, you know, I do my best to, um, to rectify them. Generally, most of the complaints are, you know, the buses are late or the running behind schedule, which is traffic and, and some other things. Right now with COVID, all of the buses and cabs are running single person. So pre-COVID, if you had two people in a general locality of each other going to the same place, the bus would pick up both of them. Or, or three of them, you know, um, and so, but it is curb to curb, um, you, meaning you do have to walk outside of your house to get on the bus, um, you know, and then off again. Do you guys have any questions?
Yes. Um, does it work, run on weekends also? It runs um, 365, 24 seven. That's great. So all it, all it requires is you to, and I see Cindy kind of smiling. Um, I, all, I don't know about the 24 seven. Yeah, it, it, I know it, it is a 24. No, I don't know how many people actually, we do have one person who rides it at four in the morning. Um, but uh, okay. it, great. yeah, it, so it is, um, uh, you know, getting to the to that service, um, you do have to make your reservation um, uh, 24 hours in advance. We, we have gone away from same day um, service we used to at the at the beginning you could call like at eight and get a two o'clock ride wow. now now with COVID because we are doing single bus rides it's they don't they can't do it they just don't have the flexibility of the of the service that's very comprehensive yeah. I like well, that I think it's a great service I do it, too it really is it really is um it it, it, yeah. it not it not only gets the young people to work in school or even socializing, um, but it also with the expansion of getting the seniors to do it, um, it gets them out of isolation. Out you know gets them to go to the grocery store. Gets them um, you know I I know I know in the past we've had people use it to go to the movies or to go to the mall for the day you know meet up with friends um but it does it does keep them moving around the township and there's there's a plus to this is because you know with the 10 mile radius they are using services or visiting retail or restaurants in the township primarily, which means we're, we're adding to the tax base of that village. So one, one thing when you and I were talking about this, Trish, you mentioned too um, that uh, people could get rides to ECC as well, even mm -hmm. though that's not in the township, correct? That is correct. And so that, that is primarily our, um, you know, those are primarily our young people. And um, because ECC is a, is a community school college uh, for Dundee Township, that is, you know, so we do give them rights to there. Okay. But generally it's restricted to within, within the township. That is correct. In three right. miles. Right. Okay. Any other questions for Trish? Okay, thanks, Trish, for that uh, Thank you. service. Um, I'm going to move on to the next agenda item, um, which is a motion to approve a budget allocation of $112,000 for the Dundee Township Paratransit Service for uh, fiscal year uh, 21, which will run from March 1st, 2021 through February 28th, 2022. And can I have a motion? There's just one correction. It's um, fiscal. It's fiscal year 22. Okay, I'm sorry. FY 22. Two. Can I have a motion? So move. Okay, thank you, Don. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Maria. Um, okay, any discussion? Uh, yes. Does Trish have to recuse herself? Negative. Okay. Okay. So I have a question. You, it yeah. would, it would still take new applicants, right? Oh yeah. Throughout. Yes. Throughout oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we get, we take new people. Yeah, there is All no, the there is no wait list. There is no nothing. Okay. Yeah. And application process is through through the website. I'm guessing now with COVID no. or no they. No, no, it's still not in person. We either have to email it or you um, you can pick it up. We leave it at the flagpole, um, but it has to be filled out because it does require a signature and it does require um, either a state ID, driver's license, and or depending upon the age, um, a, a doctor's note as to okay. why, why you need to use the service. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so 
I just want to give a little more, a little more background on the number, how we got to this number and, and some of the, the logic around it. So there is an agreement between the township and PACE. It runs from January 1st through December 31st um, and has to be renewed every year. Uh, in, that, in that contract, uh, PACE outlines what, the, what they, they believe the cost will be based on the number of one-way rides that they'll provide. Um, I can't tell you the logic of how they arrive at that number um, Trish is going to set up a, I mean, the contract's already been signed, but Trish is going to set up a call between me and her and someone at PACE to better understand uh, some of the numbers they provide. Uh, the rides are subsidized by a federal grant, a county grant, and a PACE grant. So what they do is they estimate the cost based on the number of rides they think. There's also a call center cost in here as well, you know, because you, you have to call to reserve, you know, to get a ride. Um, and they deduct that from their estimated costs and they present to the township what they expect the township's contribution to be for the number of rides that they estimate. And the number, the number for calendar year 2021 is $140,000. So Trish and I took a, took a look back. I don't, what did we look at? Almost 10 years worth of invoices. Correct. Um, and the cost, I mean, the cost has been going up year by year as more people use the service as costs increase, you know, just operating costs, et cetera. Um, but because the riders over 65 would not fall under the auspices of the 708 board. We had to figure out a way to uh, alloc how much how much of the $140,000 to allocate to the township for their budget planning, because they have to put a they have to approve a budget by next month, or March at the latest. Um, and and how much how, how much how many of the rides are actually given to people between the ages of 22 and 64. So Trish pulled, a, pulled one month of detail of rides and we determined that 73% of those rides were, would be covered under the definition of the 708 Mental Health Board. Okay, so disabled, developmentally disabled, mental health issues uh, and those types of things. And then because it was December, 2020, and for example, nobody's going to ECC and probably cutting back on some other, other items as well, we decided to go to with 80%. And so we estimated that going forward, at least for our budget purposes, that 80% of the rides would be would, would fall under the 708 board definition, and so 80 percent of 140 thousand comes to 112 thousand, and that's what that's how we arrived at the 112 thousand dollar number. Now this is a budget number, and I will tell you that um, at least for the, the 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 previous two to three years that I I had time to look at um, the budget has never been exceeded. In fact, hasn't even been hit um, over the past few years. So I feel comfortable with this number uh, that we won't run out of, we won't run out of funds for the demand unless it really spikes. But I also think we have enough room in the budget if we have to reallocate, we can do that uh, in the future. Uh, so that's where that number comes from. And that's how it ties back to the PACE contract. So I wanted, to, I wanted to explain the reasoning behind this, that it wasn't just a number pulled out of a hat. And I brought it forward now without a prior uh, uh, notification or discussion on this, at least laying the groundwork for it, because I sort of, I, I, a little bit I lost track of this, I'll admit in December, uh, but also it, it suddenly occurred to me that 
Trish has got to present a budget to her, you know, to the township township board. And they're not an easy, easy group to deal with on budgetary matters, uh, as I can attest to firsthand. And uh, so I wanted, I wanted Trish to have an accurate number for her budget um, so that she can present that to her board uh, either ne the, the meeting next week or, or the following meeting in February, whenever she decides to do that. Um, so that's, that has to do with the timing. So I apologize. I usually don't like, I don't like just throwing, you know, throwing this in front of everybody without enough time to digest it. So I apologize to that. And I, and I will do my best not to do that in the future. Uh, so what we're asking for here is that beginning in March of 2021, that um, we will allocate $112,000 from our budget for funding the paratransit services for those aged 22 to 64 who have uh, developmental disabilities and uh, mental health issues. Also and physical disabilities, right? Physical disabilities as well, yes. I have a, I have a question. Sure. Um, where did this money come from before if there was no 708 mental health board? It came from the township budget. From the, yeah, so it would generally, it would come out of the general fund. So what we're doing is we're... So aren't they going to be happy we're not spending their money, we're spending our money? <laughs> yes. We're spending, we're spending taxpayers' money. Taxpayers' well, money. It's coming out of our pot. Correct. Yeah, but it's coming there, out of, right, it's coming out of our pot, but it's an appropriate expense. Yeah. Um, as Trish well knows, and as at least one other board member knows, uh, I would not tolerate the trustees trying to push expenses off that belong in their budget off onto us. But I believe quite sincerely that this is an expense that's appropriate for us. And is, and is that amount much different than the last couple of years? I know you said it keeps going up, but is it much different than the 112, much different than the last couple of years? I so, would, oh, I'm sorry, Paul. I would say, I think if I, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but if my memory serves me right, um, for the last budget year, it was, it was $97,000 total okay. for both those 22 to 64 as well as those 65 and older okay. but most most of the rides as i said earlier are for the, the younger age group yeah i was just trying to think you know dallas used it more she actually worked more all during covid than she has in years but then someone like Miriam took a furlough and hasn't worked at all. Yes. So I'm sure it all kind of averages out. But. Right, and that's, that's what we're seeing, correct. We're seeing, uh, you know, uh, our, our grocery workers um, have, have exponentially increased their hours. You know, um, I, I have I have some I have some grocery workers who in general would work 10 to 15 hours are working 30 to 40 hours. Yeah, that's um, yeah. And, and so the 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 five dollar per ride still exists because that's that's what that's the outlay that the rider has to has to pay. This is just the the portion of the allocation or, or the portion that had you know would be paid to pace okay any Thank other you. questions or discussion you did mention that if there was an increased need that we would have it in the budget to um, increase that allocation if necessary yeah if you if you recall, uh, last month's meeting, um, we're estimating that there's $3 million plus coming in from the taxpayers over the next, you know, several months. Mm -hmm. um, and we haven't even begun to figure out how, how that, you know, how we're going to, um, what we're going to use that money for yet. We have some ideas. Uh, so I think we're going to be hard pressed 
to allocate the entire amount that we get? Yes. Uh, so yes, I do think so. And I, I would say that if we notice, I mean, if, if we're gonna manage the budget properly, I think if we notice that um, things are ticking up and the rate of expenses faster than we had anticipated, uh, that we can we can make early we can make corrections early on so we don't get caught uh, sure. yeah. with an empty till at the end. So um, you know, so I think we'll monitor it closely. I have I personally have some issues with the way that pays bills the township, uh, and so we're going to try to figure out if um, that process can be simplified a bit, and they can provide the data that we need to really monitor the program. Okay. Uh, but in the meantime. I, th I think we have enough to, you know, to feel comfortable moving forward. And because Pace is asking for 100, you know, asking the township to allocate $140,000 out of their budget, basically that's what we're doing at this point. So it'll be 140,000, it'd be 112,000 for the 708 board and it's uh, 29,000 and some change because the actual amount is 141 and something. Um, and 29,000 will come out of the township budget to handle the riders who are 65 or older. And if those young ladies uh, who like to go to Emmett's want to increase their time to Emmett's, uh, then that'll be a problem for the uh, township to handle, not us. <laughs> this is a whole lot of outdoor dining going on right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, they may want to make up for lost time, you know, <laughs> if they can, uh, if things uh, start to free up here come, uh, come May or June or July. Mm -hmm. uh, any other uh, questions or discussion? Okay, uh, Trish, could you take a roll call, please? Uh, sure. For the motion to approve an allocation of $112,000 for paratransit yep. services. Yep, we still have, yep, we have, a, we have the motions on the table. We've had discussion. Um, Trustee Burial? Aye. Trustee R. Merrill? Aye. Trustee Olden? Aye. Supervisor Gleese? Aye. And President Setz? Aye. Okay, that is five. The motion carries. Thank you, everybody. I think that's great. That's our first service for the coming year. <laughs> Thank you for providing all the background, Trish, and the breakdown. Um, we str uh, Bloomingdale also struggles with transportation. It's such, it's such a great need for so many of our clients. It is. And the fact that um, we can now, I mean, we now know that we will be able to provide, you know, our, the, the, I know who's on the program now and what's going to be one of the problems with the 708 board is we never due to concerns. And I get this, we're never going to know who's turning 22 till after they turn 22. You know, it's not like we get this list that say in the next 30 days and, and that's, and, 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 and I mean, it's not, it's, not really HIPAA compliant, but I mean, I, I understand the compliant issues. So as you know, now I'll be able to ensure and tell, go, go to D300 and tell them, yes, we now, you know, we, the gear, the program's guaranteed. We, we don't have a problem. It won't be cut or anything like that. So that will, that will get some of those social workers, you know, a sigh of relief, if you will. So the other, the other thing, just to uh, let you know about how we handle this in the future going forward with the, the invoices and things, um, Trish and I, or the clerk, uh, the township clerk um, with me, will figure out what the breakdown is of what we should be paying on a month, you know, for the current, for the past month's invoice. And those invoice, that invoice, that amount will come to us for approval. Uh, so part, part of going forward beginning in March um, is we'll, we'll be adding a financial aspect to the, um, to the agenda. 
And there are two parts to that. One is uh, a statement of accounts and the other is to approve any bills that come in. And so this will get more comp, this will get, this will, this will take up more volume, I guess is the right way to say it in terms of meeting time going forward as we issue contracts and things like that. And my hope is that when we present the bills, the bill for the paratransit services that will provide you with some additional information such as how many rides there were, uh, and maybe some further breakdown on that. So you get a sense of how much the service is being used in addition to how much it's costing. So I, if you all, I think you will all find that valuable. If we don't, if we don't, if we feel as a group that it's not valuable going forward, we can always stop doing it. But I think it's it's helpful that um, we have some basic information about the services being provided, not just a description of the services. So that, and this is part of the education, community education piece that Maria, you know, uh, has talked about before. Is that when we talk to members of the community, we do have this other information at our fingertips rather than just, well, we spent, you know, $8,000 last month on, on paratransit services. Well, what, how, do, how does that translate? Well, we served X number of people, you know, so many one-way trips, you know, it puts some, it puts a, it doesn't put a face to it, but it puts an anonymous face on it so mm -hmm. that people understand that, you know, they're actually real people that are being affected by Maybe you know, even getting testimonies or like, just a, a little words from um, members that have used these services and how, or I don't know, or families. Just feel like maybe sometimes community members don't know because they have never utilized those services so they don't trust it. But then once you start hearing how much it has helped other people, kind of puts things in perspective too. Well, okay, so there, there ties in a little bit of a problem, Maria, because even any information that you receive, you will not know who the writers are. We cannot divulge writers' names. I'm not or saying names or information or demographics. I'm just saying an, a general statement from a family that has been pleased with or has been. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm not saying anything. I'm just putting well, it out there yeah. the, the community doesn't know that these programs even exist so because actually, of that it's it's yeah actually, i remember being in d300 and working with with a cognitive um disability students and families and i don't think they knew about these services because they no. can't use it they can't use it till they're 22 the, we had 22 year olds in mm -hmm. our groups but then, I'm just, I'm not yeah, saying yeah, yeah. like we, we have to, I'm just saying, or put demographics names. I'm just saying they need, they're going to ask for these things. They're going right. to be inquiring about um, information and it's good to be prepared and it's good oh, sure. to put right. like, like background, like, like Paul was saying, like we need to educate the community. These are programs that are available. These are, and maybe, maybe you directly not don't benefit from it, but you know a friend or you know a family member, you know a coworker that might need it, that might benefit from it. So you, you want to know what it's all about, you know, so. Yeah, so this is, this between rental, paying rent, rent your rent and your utilities, riding cane and cemeteries are the three three largest known programs in this in the township um so they you know continuing with the community service uh or or getting getting word out to the community is a great thing mm -hmm. yeah okay um okay that's all for new business this evening is there any any other items that uh Word on the agenda tonight that people would like to bring up? Okay. Um, the next meeting will be February 11th uh, at 6.30. And I think, I think the next meeting, what I would like to do, which means I've got to get my act together here is, um, is to start talking about priorities and where we might want to focus our our efforts in terms of soliciting services for the township. Uh, we have our one-year plan, and I think we need now to think about the types of services that 
um, you know, are needed here based on our conversations with the community members and, and, and the like. Uh, because what I would what I would like as a goal is to um, maybe by April is to start putting out solicitations for uh, services um, and give you know give people six to eight weeks to respond to that and then uh, you know around June time the June time frame if we can keep on track um, you know we start we start evaluating. Um, proposals from service providers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through all the notes that people have provided, uh, try to try to come up with some some th themes, common themes among everything, just as a starting point for a discussion. I don't I don't I don't want to I personally don't want to set the priorities. I think that's a group decision to do. But I, I think there needs to be some structure around that. So um, I'm willing to put put the time in to, to sort of come up with some of those themes and some of the services. And I'll look at some of the other townships uh, or counties and the types of services that they're providing um, and, and have that as a, as a starting point for the discussion. But I think that I would like to spend a significant, you know, most of our meeting next time uh, talking about priorities and seeing if we can come to some sort of agreement on what our priorities should be. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Do do we want? I'm sorry. Do we want a speaker for next month? Um. I don't know. Do people would people like to have another speaker next month? Is there a topic that you don't know about within the realm of of the 708 Mental Health Board? You know, whether it's disabilities. Do you do you want to talk about it or? You know, what I, you know, something, I mean, this gets brought up almost every meeting about the effect of COVID on mental health. Um, it would be nice if we could have somebody in the community who could, who, who has, um, a practice of yeah, who's, who's actually, you know, sees this firsthand, you know, who's, who's, who's dealing with, with some of these issues. Uh, you know, whether it's somebody at the hospital or, you know, uh, a practitioner or something like that, I think might be helpful for us because I think one of the, one of the prior, as I've thought about this, I think one of the priorities we may have to grapple with is, um, you know, services related uh, specifically to COVID. Mm -hmm. Things like, you know, anxiety, depression, uh, helplessness, you know, how do I get myself out of this hole since I haven't worked for the last six months? Um, you know, those, those types of things, um, I think might be, might be helpful, at least from my perspective. I don't know if everybody else feels the same way. I completely agree. It's 100% needed. And I don't, I feel like I need more information on it because I work with people that have been affected by it. And sometimes I, I don't feel equipped, but in general, as a community, I don't feel like we have we have an understanding of how, of how deep and how important and how hard it has been for other people that are going through this. Well, let me let me see who I can reach out to and I'll see who I can get. I don't know anybody off the top of my head. I'll see what I can find. Yeah, I, I don't I don't either. Um... I know that Advocate um, Outpatient Clinic in West Dundee has been doing testing every single day and they do receive a lot of people. So I don't know if maybe one of the practitioners there will be willing to come out and speak out on like just the effects of it or like mm -hmm. how to or coping skills or things like that or things that they're giving out to the community. I well, shared something with you guys. I don't know if you guys got it. It was like a brochure about yes. um, about it too. I don't know if you guys got it, but I, I, I was, it was interesting. I was thinking of tapping somebody either from the county uh, department or health or the state. I don't really want to hit a practitioner who's probably working 60 to 80 hours a week 
as it is. Um, so I was going to go either, you know, I was going to go, I'll go through the, um, because of, you know, because of my position, I have contacts within the King County Department of Health and the Illinois State Department of Health. So I will go that route. Yeah, um, another, another route too is, you know, people like Wendy, you know, who deal, you know, deal with this directly yeah as well so you know you know someone like wendy or you know who's who's a religious leader or a pastor okay um you know just to give a first-hand experience of you know what what they're seeing and what they see the you know the need as yeah the okay. pastoral counseling okay thank you that's a much more elegant way of saying it don thank you got it okay all right, and then I do have one piece uh, for the open discussion um, is uh, uh, the regular meeting of the Dundee Township Board of Trustees is scheduled for next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Should you want to attend another Zoom meeting? I can attest they're always entertaining. <laughs> we should probably also let the board know that on even months, uh, oh that yeah. um, uh, Trish has asked me to provide an update on the 708 board activity. So my next report to the board, which is usually generally pretty short, um, is in February. Except you will be there. Uh, I since will be there next Wednesday. Right, yeah, yeah. because of the, uh, you know, to tell them that they're getting potential, you know, that, you know, we're funding the Jark Riders. Okay. So I get I get uh, an extra meeting a month uh, with the, uh, my favorite group of trustees. Thank you for doing that. Um, sure, happy to do it. I've got been a going, I've been going to the meetings for the last fourteen or fifteen months, so they're uh, they're used to me. <laughs> okay, with that, I will um, entertain a motion uh, to adjourn the meeting. Come on, Cindy. All right, Cindy is the second. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Cindy. Um, Trish, can you take a I, vote? I sure can. Trustee Armero? Aye. Uh, Trustee Oldham? Aye. Trustee Burrell? Aye. Supervisor Gleese? Aye. And President Setz? Aye. Okay. With that, President Sets, I'll be canceling or stopping the recording. Is that acceptable to you? Yes, please.